the Vice President of the United States, Kamala, Kamala Harris. In this time of, of, of great uh, uh, challenge uh, for Israel and at a time of, of, of horror for really Jewish people, primarily uh, Jews on campuses who are being harassed and be, being beaten, being chased, and, and, uh, and experiencing what it is like to be in a hostile environment. Um, during this period, Kamala uh, has your back. Don't worry. Uh, she is launching uh, the country's first national strategy to counter Islamophobia. Because the real problem in America right now, as we speak, the real problem in America is fear of Muslims. We're all terrified of Muslims, and that results in really, really harsh behavior towards Muslims. You'd think that after October 7th, Islamophobia would be a term relegated to the dustbin of history. Because don't you think that after October 7th, we should be afraid of Muslims? Didn't October 7th actually show that Islamists, radical Islamists, well, Islamists, radical Muslims, are alive and well, and they want to kill you. And they will kill you. They have no qualms about killing you, raping you, beheading you, burning you, chopping up your children. I mean, if you're not a little afraid of Muslims right now, there's something wrong with you. And you would think that in the aftermath of October 7th, Muslims in this country would be, what? Muslims in this country would be ashamed, embarrassed, maybe come out in support of peace, maybe condemn and denounce Hamas and everything Hamas stands for. Maybe they would come out for, I don't know, moderate Islam in opposition to the Islamist jihadist agenda. You would think, just like you would think they would have done that after 9-11, and the reality is, they didn't then, and they're not now. They're silent. Or worse, they're marching in the streets supporting Hamas. They're marching in the streets supporting the slaughter of children. The rape, the barbarism that we saw from Hamas. They're embracing it. Should we be afraid of Muslims? Yes. There is no such thing as Islamophobia, which is just a smear term. There is such a thing as fear. There is such a thing as looking at the Muslim world and evaluating it. There is such a thing as condemning Islamic fundamentalism, Islamism, jihadism, Islamic totalitarianism. Call it what you will. And, you know, the vice president of the United States of America, in her wisdom, and, and this is obviously coming from Biden and coming from the strategy of the administration, they're losing Arab Muslim votes. They worried that they'll lose that vote, two million or something. I guess they don't worry about the Jewish vote. That's theirs. Jews will just vote Democratic no matter what, they think at least. Maybe they're right particularly if Trump runs, we'll see. Uh, if Trump wins, we'll see. But they think this is a good time to launch a national strategy to counter Islamophobia. I mean, I have a good idea of how to counter Islamophobia. Flatten Hamas. Destroy Hezbollah. Eliminate the regime in Iran crush whatever remnants there are of ISIS and Al-Qaeda, wherever they may be, and come home. Then we can all stop worrying about Muslims 
or at least worry a lot less, fear them a lot less, because we will have won. Problem in the world today is not fear of Muslims. It's not it's a so-called bogus concept of Islamophobia. The, the problem in the world today is that we embolden these radicals, we embolden these crazy Islamists, we embolden these suicidal, homicidal maniacs, we embolden them by our weakness, we embolden them by not being willing to name them, by not being willing to define Hamas as an Islamic organization, Hezbollah as an Islamic organization, and Iran as an Islamist state, and viewing them as our enemy. That is the challenge of our time. That has been the challenge of our time for decades, and one more administration has failed in doing what was necessary, added to a long list, going back probably to Ronald Reagan.